<laughs> you asked. Well, I did. I did. <laughs> this is your life. I don't know why. Charlie I... Band. Yes. Uh, Aren't you producing yeah. this uh, this series of films? Yes. And uh, is, it a, is it? Are we doing uh, egotism here, or is there a reason <laughs> for us doing this interview? There really is. Yes. And the reason is, although you're producing these uh, series of films. Uh, the, uh, the, as a package, you have in fact produced 200 in excess. Over of 200, and um, I've directed a few of the ones in this particular series. So, um, so you're director, producer. How about a writer? A creator, um, much like Stan Lee was talking about. Um, you know, coming up with ideas, concepts. Sometimes a, a very uh, brief storyline. But no, there are wonderful writers who've worked for Full Moon and have written wonderful scripts. Does the subject matter, the horror, sci-fi, fantasy. Is that a uh, part of the marketing marketing uh, uh, idea, the thrust of what you're doing? Yeah, I've always, I, I, I think with no exceptions, I've only, I've only made, I've always made science fiction, fantasy, and horror films. Why? Uh, it's a genre I love, and I didn't want to specialize in something that wasn't my thing, you know, so I've always been a fan of, the, of these films, and I started making, um, these, these pictures a long time ago, and I've sort of stayed with that genre. I enjoy it as a fan. I enjoy making these movies. And the key here is to make it for a price. There's so many keys. You need like 50 keys on a chain to stay alive. Yeah, you got to make it for a price. It's got to be high concept. You got to make sure you get it into. And today, it's blockbuster Hollywood. If not, you have no business. Um, it's it's commerce. It's business. It's you know spending two and trying to make three. You know, and winding up with half a cent at the end of the day to pay uh, your bills. So. Yeah, because if you overspend, and you know, if you make one picture and it's a labor of love, you can get away with anything because, you know, but if this is your business and you make one picture a month, which is what, you, what we do, it, it is a business. You have to stay within a, a framework. And of, what's the framework? That's where I, what I'm curious about. The, fr the financial framework, where, where does that take well, you? Well, it's really... Um, I mean, it's we're very talking about sets, we're talking about wardrobe, it's, it's makeup. Very, at first, it's very seasonal Free because employees. because whatever makes sense today will absolutely make no sense in six months from now. I mean, the business changes that quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, a few short years ago, foreign was very strong. Now, foreign foreign sales, the foreign market is is for our kind of movies very weak. Um, there was a period where, for whatever reasons, we couldn't get into some of the major video retailers. Now we're in there every month with our films. Um, but generally speaking, you have to make you have to be very creative and make a picture for a price. And the only way you do that is find young talent. People who are, you know, willing to work, uh, you, you know, for a very small wage for reasons that have nothing to do with paying their rent. You know, actors who want to move on, who need something on their reel to show that they are, in fact, you know, because otherwise sometimes you'll wait for years and never get a role, you never get a part. You know, there's too many unemployed, talented actors out, out there. So, you know, it, it, sometimes you say, well, so are you taking advantage of people and this, that, and the other? But you know, people love this business and, and want to be involved in, in production, and you need to break in. You need to start working somewhere, and we're sort of that first rung on the ladder. All right. So, are you saying that that making a film for a good price is a factor in that? Is finding, uh, discovering, and employing new talent? For sure, for sure. And and that talent is in every area. In every area, and you have to know how to find it. You know, the analogy I like to talk about is. The writer who gets a million dollars to write a screenplay is still using that same couple dollars worth of paper that the guy who do it for 500 bucks. And the talent is talent, you know. It, it's just who has that talent. And you need to discover those people. I mean, I've worked with some great effects guys who've moved on and some wonderful actors and actresses and fantastic directors. And, you know, in many cases, they did their first picture for me or one of their first films for so me. So the question is, how do you find it? You have to just... Um, yeah, develop a good sense of uh, taste, I guess. You know, you do they to come to your office? Do you go see them? It depends. You know, in the case of actors, you know, you you hire uh, casting uh, people who come in and bring actors in, or you run ads in the various publications, and sometimes you have to look at a hundred people before you find out those two or three that could qualify. But, but a, a, as an actor, I am very much aware that that's the least of your worries. That there's innumerable actors, mm -hmm. and some of them are good and totally unknown and work yep. for very little. But the major talents are like writers. It's, it's everything, you know. And, and, uh, and, and the people who make it's the special really, things. The, the talent is, is on both sides of the camera. And if there's one you know, chink in the armor, if the script isn't good, I don't care how much money you have, because we all see $50 million movies that suck. You go, how could they have made this stupid movie? And usually it's the script, you know. So it, it, every piece of it's important. 
I've chosen never to chase sort of big name actors or try to pull sort of B actors with some kind of name into my movies because I like my movies to sort of work based on premise, you know, the high concept of, you know, whatever the story is as opposed to, you know, I think I can sell this movie because John Carradine's in it. And I use that name, John is gone, and he actually did a few movies with me, but there was a period where every little B movie had John Carradine in it, you know. And mm. So I just prefer to use unknown, talented actors and, and tell a good story with a high concept gimmick. Do these films then play theatrically, or do they go to, to, to the video store? Back in the, you know, a long time ago, late 70s, up probably to the late 80s, most of my films did play theatrically, some nationally. Did they make money? Uh, some did, uh, most did actually, and, and some didn't because I was involved in theatrical when that business was turning into something extremely expensive and really now the, the sole territory of major studios. You know, So back when I was making these pictures in the late 70s, early 80s, there weren't any other horror or science fiction films being made. Just a handful of people, Roger Corman made a few, but the major studios were making different kinds of films. And as soon as the major studios started to make Star Wars and films that cost that were basically our kind of movies, B movies with humongous budgets, it kind of took away our ability to go out and, and get an audience to see a picture theatrically. And at the same time, advertising costs went up. In other words, the theatrical marketplace became very cost prohibitive. So you're totally aware of the fact that you need a high concept, you need a title, uh, and that's okay. what's going to sell your film. Yeah, and then you still need to deliver something that's clever and then well told because, you know, you can get in there, but you're not going back unless you deliver something. Right. You know? And do you want to do anything else? Is there something inside Charlie Band that says, uh, I, I would like to do something else, other, or are you content with uh, the work, the creativity? I, I'm, you're I'm content with, you know, I like things to get a little easier because it seems like it's always difficult. You know, I'm waiting for that kind of easier stretch when I can have more fun with it. But I enjoy being prolific. I mean, I have friends who are making major movies. Um, you know, the grass is never greener. And sometimes they wait for a year or two years to have their project mm -hmm. get made. And they are frustrated as hell. Now, it's true when the project rolls, it's like, it's the big time. You know, there's lots of money, but there's also a lot of politics. It's never what you think it is. And, and that wait kills you, and it kills anybody who's creative. So, you know, on the positive side, we have, you know, a lot of pictures, a lot of projects. You know, I dream something up gets made a month later, it's out there, people know about it, there's a, there's a thrill, you know, in seeing your dreams come to fruition. You know, the frustration is, it's, it's you know, the canvas is so uneven, you know, someone looks again at uh, whatever the most recent big studio horror film is, and, and, and they, you, you're still judged. They say, well, you know, this little picture was kind of well made, but the other film, but the other film costs 400 times our budget. You know, I mean, it's like such a, a bizarre world out there. But, um, you know, in spite of the difficulty and the finances involved in making small pictures, there is a joy in, in, in the, um, the activity and the action and, the, and seeing things happen. And in looking at the films that are on this series of films, mm -hmm. uh, are you content? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a complete, they're, they run the gamut of um, black humor horror films, a couple that I directed I'm very proud of, to a couple urban films, which are fun, sort of street horror films. I mean, there's a couple of black comedies in there. There's uh, a, a science fiction western. It's, it's a good smattering uh, in 13 episodes of the 200 odd films I've made over too many years. Great. But, um, yeah. Great. And thank you for being part of this, by the way. All right, thanks.